Hello there, this is Brian, and this will be John Cale Part 2, Vintage Violence. I haven't really decided if I'm going to do a separate video for each record. If I do that, it will take like a year to get through this, but I decided to do one, in this case, Ford Cale's debut record from March 25th, 1970. Now, first, the bad news. I was going... I have some weird lighting happening here. I was going to uh, put in some needle drops or some song clips, but I did a test run and I uploaded a portion of a John Cale song to YouTube Studio just to see what would happen when it got to the checks portion and it was blocked in many places. So I didn't see the point of uh, putting in song clips if it was going to be blocked in part of the world, so I left it out. So that's the bad news. So. Let's just talk a bit about what Kale did after the Velvet Underground. Of course, he was kicked out of the Velvet Underground, and um, the Velvet Underground continued without him for a couple more records. And he uh, was hired by or signed by Columbia Records, and the first thing he did, as I understand it, was to arrange Nico's second album, The Marble Index, and he also produced the debut record from The Stooges. Now, in reading about that, I'm under the impression that they hired him because you know, he had a very good understanding of how you get a sound like the Stooges to vinyl. After all, he did he was working on that with the Velvet Underground, that sort of this, this sort of abrasive um, Velvet Underground sound, and somehow managed to understand how you get that to vinyl. So he did that. I also want to mention that uh, I need to change the light bulb. That uh, <laughs> this is John Cale, not J.J. Cale. Over the life of my experience with John Cale. I have mentioned him to other people and people think I'm talking about J.J. Cale of cocaine fame. Not that cocaine isn't relevant, but we're talking about a different fellow here. So, you know, if we go back into the Velvet Underground years, you know, alcohol dependency and, and especially cocaine were a problem for, for John Cale into the 80s. So that that's a feature of him. But when thinking, thinking about the Velvet Underground in relation to this record is kind of interesting because the Velvet Underground, of course, is a melding of Lou Reed and John Cale primarily. We have Lou Reed sort of um, being raised in the the era of, you know, American rock and roll, you know, the traditional gum, drums and guitars and that kind of thing. Whereas Cale has a completely different reference point in terms of culture and music coming from Wales. Didn't learn to speak English until he went to school. He um, obviously had some interesting classical music, learned the piano and the viola of course and bringing the viola into the, viola, the velvet underground was kind of interesting because it was an instrument not normally associated with with rock and roll and as kale described it the viola was the saddest instrument of saddest of all the instruments which is uh, something interesting to think about it so it was already a weird mixture i'm mentioning that because uh if you had heard the first two john kale record or first two velvet underground records and you knew that John Cale was going to put out a solo record, and you looked at it, you would think, given his history with the Velvet Underground, that it would sound something like that. And it, it doesn't really. I mean, the Let me just show you the album first. This is the CD copy that I have. One came out in 2001, I think, with bonus tracks, two bonus tracks, and this is the album. Vintage Violence, released on March 25th, 1970. This is the front cover. Interestingly for me, I mean, if you look at this, this is John Cale. He's, he has nylon over his face, and on top of the nylon, he has a glass mask, which I find really interesting because the title and the image suggest, I think, something that we don't get on the record. The other thing is, of course, that later in the 70s, um, that maybe that sort of drug-fueled um, uh, personality that we have in the 70s, he was performing with a goalie mask sometimes. He had this sort of menacing stage persona, which is kind of interesting. This is the back. John wearing something that I could never have gotten away with. Uh, so this is actually uh, an interesting, very interesting record to me. And at the end, I'll give you my ass like assessment of it. Um, so I don't think the his heritage in terms of what he did with the Velvet Underground uh, kind of match up with what he did here. And I don't think the album cover kind of matches, but it's kind of a cool album cover. And um, the backing band, let's talk about that. The backing band was someone called Penguin, but really that is simply uh, Jeff Garland Jeffries' backing band, which was known as Grinders Switch. On here, they're known as Penguin. Garland Jeffries is on this record. 
On the back here, we have some statements that talks about the fact that he, you know, worked with the Stooges and Nico, that he was a member of the Velvet Underground, that he's known for electric violin or electric viola performances that our people are still talking about. Um, list of characters who appear in the record. The co-producer, Louis Merenstein, noted that vintage violence is John Cale, his songs, his singing, and his playing. Listen and you, you will know too. So, um, but beyond that, there's not much to say about the, the cover and the band and, and whatnot. Um, it's, a, it's a, I guess the more, most important thing for me is that it's kind of raw in some cases, but it's, it's lush, it's orchestral in some ways, it's kind of um, melodic. In other words, it's not really uh, what you'd expect. It's, it's accessible too. Like I think you could argue that some Velvet Underground, Underground music was not really accessible to everyone. Some people thought it was noise. This, on the other hand, is very accessible. Um, so it's not the mayhem that you might have expected from someone who was in the Velvet Underground. There's no paranoia or neurosis that you would find in later John Cale records. Um, yeah, the title is a bit misleading. There's no violence here. Um, the, it's really a pop record, and there's nothing really avant-garde about it. So it starts there, the side one with Hello There, <laughs> which is a piano-based rocker, which is actually quite good. I would say that in general, a lot of the lyrics are a bit impenetrable or a bit strange, so it's not easy to make sense of what, what is going on here. Hello There, good piano-based tune. I think it's actually pretty good. Um, it's a bit surreal and dreamlike, though. It's hard to even describe what it, what's happening. It seems like someone's being trapped and needing to escape and that kind of thing. The second track, Gideon's Bible, is a highlight for me. It's one of the best tracks on the album. Adelaide is, is good, it's, uh, it, but I would say if I were to rank them, I'd put that one right near the end or maybe at the end. It's a bit simplistic, weird backing vocals. Big White Cloud, I think, is good. That one's arranged and conducted also by John Cale. Um, uh, but again, weird lyrics, that talking about licking a tree and that kind of thing. Um, Cleo's kind of, an, an, kind of a low point for me. It's, it's okay, but it's, it's just not fabulous. Please is okay. It's got a slide guitar, I think, in it. Uh, it's, again, weird lyrics. He talks about my power amphibious bride at some point, so kind of strange. Charlemagne starts off side two is excellent. That's a really good track. If you're going to listen to some, I choose Hello There, you know, Gideon's Bible, Charlemagne. Um, bring it on, bring it on up. Kind of like a, maybe that's a um, countryish drinking song. They mentioned sheriff, a saloon, wagon, that kind of thing. Amsterdam is a highlight. That is a very peaceful, melodic, acoustic song, just a guitar and John Cale's voice, and he does a really good vocal performance on that. Ghost Story is another one I would say right, is right up there. Again, Strange. It's a really good song, really great melody. I'd say one of the best, but the lyrics just don't, they don't really make any sense to me. And it builds to sort of this frenetic ending. The last one, Fairweather Friend, is a track written by Garland Jeffries. So he does have some influence on this record, apart from being in the backing band. So, yeah, I would say all in all, sophisticated melodies... Um, not what we, well, I don't say we, I wasn't really aware of music then, <laughs> not what people might have been expecting, not the abrasive sound of the Velvet Underground. And I find it really engaging. Some people will put this as their favorite John Cale record or maybe in the top five. I don't. I'm going to give my assessment of each of these records as I go on a scale of the following. Uh, essential, recommended, optional, or not recommended. And this one for me is recommended. So there's only four, four to choose from. This falls into recommended because I think there are several other records that would fall into the essential category. This one for me makes it to recommended. It's a perfectly good record. I enjoy it and I, I recommend it. You can go and listen to it and hopefully you'd find something good in there. Uh, I can show you the labels if that's important. All the labels. So that's number episode number two for John Cale's debut solo record. And I think uh, the next record is a, comp is a collaboration he did with Terry Riley. I don't know if I'll do that separately or join with another record. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.